Hey, I'm Dan, and I'm here with Joe today to talk about the essay, Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists, by Linda Noclin. We'll give some quick background to put her work into context, then we'll do a breakdown of her arguments, and finish with a short discussion afterwards to survey what she's brought to the intellectual table. Linda Noclin was an American art historian. She was born in 1931 and passed away in 2017. When her academic work started, art history was still following a version of the great man theory. Her 1971 essay, Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists, was an open challenge to this way of thinking and was deeply influential to the field. This essay came at a time when the second wave of feminism was flourishing. Within three years, we'd see both Title IX and the Women's Educational Equality Act passed. While feminism had grown popular with laymen since the early 60s, it had yet to penetrate into academia. San Diego State University was the first to offer a women's studies program in 1970 with 11 courses. Almost 50 years later, feminism has bloomed in academia, buttressed by empirical evidence from numerous fields. Linda Noclin begins the essay by pointing out that the question subtly frames the debate in such a way that a typical feminist would get distracted trying to bring up examples. Examples are admittedly few, and Noclin uses this as a pivot to show how the question is unfair to women artists through the ages. The question should really be, why does society not allow women to access the institutions that prepare great artists? Why does society not allow a woman artist equal footing? First, she examines what kinds of institutions make great artists. We tend to think of great artists as being lone geniuses who were gifted at birth, but even for those lone geniuses, that gift was fostered. Most great artists came from well-known schools of art. Their art comes from a specific style, philosophy, and type of training. You can clearly trace their influences because they had an artistic institution nurturing their ability. Historically, women were simply not allowed into these institutions. Great artists must first learn the rules of art in order to experiment outside of those rules. This leads to Noclin's hypothesis. The cause for this lack of great women artists is that women were barred from the institutions. Women were never allowed into schools, apprenticeships, and other important ways to gain expertise in some art forms. The fact that women artists made notable progress in ballet, singing, writing, and poetry supports Noclin's hypothesis. Society itself was preventing women from becoming masters in other arts. For example, women were not permitted to study nude models through much of the 1800s. As expert artists will attest, being able to replicate the human form is a key milestone for a fledgling artist. Given that they were denied this cornerstone of artistic education, expecting greatness is unreasonable. Noclin's conclusion is that we must make intentional efforts to change societal norms to be more inclusive. We should raise awareness to these societal barriers and help tear them down. This strategy has already borne fruit. We see many gifted women artists today. The problem was never female artists. It was the ambient culture that denied women access to the institutions necessary to earn greatness. For the next part of the essay, we were just going to talk a little bit about um, Noclin's ideas and just kind of what what perhaps uh, we can take away from this and include in society or, you know, in our values today. Um, what really struck me is that um, we think of women's rights as something that's like mostly like done, you know, it's like a solved problem. Yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of like how we, how we think about like racism in this country, but Obviously, ended in 1970. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're done. We we finished this. You know, it's a good old uh, constitutional amendment, and we're good to go. But but we start to see that that people's attitudes and people's sort of closed mindedness is really baked into some parts of the country and some and some parts of people's psyche. And the laws don't stop that. Um, and so, like her essay really shows how women have had to fight for. A fight against many different barriers in their um, in their struggle for equality. Yeah, I would agree. Um, based on my like my reading into history, um, I think you can kind of see this pattern in different struggles for equality that you can get legal equality, but most probably most aspects of life are not 
you know, with the law or with uh, legal structures. It's with private institutions, and they, for the most part, can do what they want. Yeah, most most of life doesn't happen inside of a courtroom. I think that's that's the only problem with with these. Like the amendments are a good idea. Um, you know, obviously they should be in place. Uh, but but working on people's individual like attitudes and like kind of changing society on a fundamental level is a lot harder than changing you know the rules in some old on some old piece of paper. Um, right. Uh, I mean, I don't think there is a good way of doing that without. I mean, the only examples I'm aware of where governments have done big changes to culture, uh, especially rapidly, are, I mean, involve a lot of very inhumane Oof. kind of treatments. I mean... Well, we, we could talk for a long time about the French Revolution, but... <laughs> well, but, I mean, you can look at the French Revolution, you can look at how China, or, I mean, and I don't want to say this is just China, but say China's treatment of, like, the Uyghur people or other uh, ethnic minorities... Uh, we've certainly done similar with like, um, I, f I forget the name of the practice, but you know, with the Native Americans, we take their children and put them in Western schools mm. and they lose their uh, inherited languages. Oh, yeah. They lose a lot of their culture. They've done similar in Australia. They've done similar in Canada. It's interesting because the common thread that really binds all of those different um, different problems together or i mean problematic actions together is that it's you see people who use fear of the, of either you know of another culture or fear of and and i mean i i think the reason why we see a lot of um fight against women's rights is because it's fear of oh a woman's going to take my job oh fear of women are going to become more important in, in society than i am and i think a lot of the racial tensions and you know um, obviously it's more complicated than this but it's just the idea, it's that fear of the unknown, and sometimes it's fear of the unknown of a different culture, but sometimes it's fear of the unknown of, like, what's going to happen to my society if women have the, as much say-so as I do. Mm -hmm. And and so it's you're kind of fighting against time and people's kind of, cons you know, maybe conservative or, um, or you know, out outdated ways of thinking where... Because mm -hmm. a lot of this comes from the idea that women don't have something... To bring to the table, and we know from societies, um, from society today, many amazing women artists. But I, I think another aspect of this essay that really has stuck out to me is the fact that, like this, this isn't really like women fighting for a major right, like voting or equal opportunity to, um, to you know, to work. Um, in a way, this is similar to the similar to equal opportunity to work because if men and women artists can't get the same job equally then that's a problem but it's but what sticks out to me more is that is the fact that we we usually think of art as like a hobby something that you do to express yourself something you do for fun um and and art is honestly it's 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 therapeutic it's you know some art is something that is very is a very very personal thing and to see women barred from such a personal you know um, eye-opening or self um, self-fulfilling sort of um, pastime is just you know that, that really uh, it really opened my eyes because as a man you know we take it for granted that I can be anything from a president to um, to to a pauper painter you know if I want but to see that um, especially because of the later latest political things that have happened a, a woman doesn't have an equal shake at being a president. Mm. A woman doesn't have, um, you know, and obviously there's a lot more that happened in the election, but but it's... Um, yeah, we don't want to yeah, that's, drastically yeah. oversimplify here, but I, I do think it was a factor, and I think you would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just, it, in, in a lot of ways, this country isn't ready to give women an uh, equal standing in, in in everything. And, and you know, maybe times have changed from when Miss uh, from when Miss Noakland wrote the essay to right now, but... You know, I'm I'm sure that there's still some parts of the country, still some parts of the world, that uh, women don't get an equal shake at being an artist the same way that me or you would. You know, mm -hmm. so so that that was really eye opening. Just the fact the fact that you have to fight for equality just to participate in you know in a hobby and in a therapeutic exercise. You know, because um, I mean, obviously for the most people, art doesn't turn into a career, but it's just 
it, it was just really, you know, it'd be like having to fight for equal rights to like to walk your dog. It's just, um, it just really opened my eyes that that's a barrier women have had to fight against. So, re I th a really awesome essay that you know that she that yeah. she really brought yeah. this idea into the into the light. Yeah, I don't I don't think you could. I don't think you could make a well-supported claim that things have not improved since 1970. Um, certainly, there's things that still need to improve, but I think, broadly speaking, things are better uh, in terms of equality in most ways. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're seeing sort of pushback now. I mean, it's... it's it's complicated, but yeah. yeah. Well, well, history kind of is is like a tide; it it, it ebbs and uh, and flows, you know, and uh, and because I I know I've met, we all know guys that have closed minded uh, ideas, um, and so there's there's obviously still some work that needs to be mm. done with raising awareness to women's issues and. Um, well, it's not just men either. There are plenty of women who kind of participate in what we call the patriarchy, right? Who, oh, that's true. Who want to very rigidly enforce social roles for women and also for men. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's very complicated. I don't know that there's an easy answer here. There's no easy answer, but but it yeah. is it is interesting to see that we, even with just the idea of like writing down an essay, writing down your thoughts and just kind of uh, having your, your critiques, um, I, I mean, I, I know this essay is a foundational um, essay for uh, any any person that is interested in women's studies or art history. This is kind of like a, a, a marriage of those two like important uh, ideas. Um, so it's I, I, I think that's that's most of the, uh, it, it always sucks that progressive people always have to fall back on the well, we've done our job. We've raised awareness <laughs> to this issue. But, you know, I, I think. Uh, uh, in some sense, that's all you can do is kind of, like, research it for yourself, maybe uh, self-reflect on this and sort of maybe things that you've done wrong or or attitudes that you hold. Um, but at the end of the day, that's really all you control, mm -hmm. right? So, As long as you hold yourself and the people that you spend your time with uh, accountable. And yeah. if you can do your own forms of art where you help raise awareness to uh, to things like uh, these sort of problems to even strangers and uh, post some stuff on YouTube. Then <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I guess that's a pretty good uh, place for us to wrap up. Yeah, I'd say so. All right. Well, definitely. Thank you for joining us for our uh, for our first um, critical. Ever Dan and Joe get critical. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, we, we plan to do a lot more things like this. Uh, thanks for joining us and um, ho uh, hope you check out our, our stuff in the future.